so, of course, they had to cash in on the franchise and do T3 Rise of the Fucking Machines. Ooh, actually, mm -hmm. God, actually, you might be right because, like, um. It, yeah, because I read it yeah, somewhere, like, yeah, it was. Okay, actually, the cost is actually $36 million, while Captain EO yeah, is just, just 24. How expensive yeah, is SpongeBob wish... Ride? SpongeBob Ride, or SpongeBob 40. <laughs> I'll check that, actually. Oh, oh God, fine. he's gonna. He's trying to, try to find Why that. I bet he's like. Just for, like posterity's sake. Shit. Here we go. <laughs> so, no, they don't. They don't say. So, no, they don't, because it's like a really low, 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 low budget kind it's of thing. so low budget, they won't even tell you. Um, T3, the Rise of Machines, brings back Arnold Schwarzenegger, and they have a different John Connor played by, um, yeah. what's his name? Nick Stahl. Thank you. Now, here's the thing I was mentioning earlier about the age difference between in T2. The thing is, is that um, John Connor says right away, I was 13 years old when T2 happened. And I was like, no, you were 10 years old. You're, that is, like, fault. That, that, that continuity is a bitch on that one. Mm -hmm. That's and... the first thing I noticed. It, it, it threw me off. It's like... You're wrong. The writers of this film did not understand the film as It's not even a matter of understanding, we it's a matter of paying attention. Exactly. Just like figure out the timeline. Look at the cues. Like there was a couple of signs where like on the screen in T two there's like John Connor, ten years old. I fucking hate that. It, it threw me out of the movie. I was wow. like, okay, get your facts straight. Yeah, even I was like, Really? Seriously? I just hate when they don't get their facts straight, especially if it's a sequel. I literally almost went, um, yeah, screw it. What the hell, movie? Hopefully you're that's, better. Uh... That's the first flaw yes. that we have here. Uh, but the... As, as the film as the film goes on, I, I remember seeing this one in theaters. This was the first time I'd seen a, a Terminator film in the theaters. And overall, I'd actually say... I'd actually say that I did, I did kind of enjoy it, and and for a while. Uh, what what are you doing? What are you doing, Mike? He's he's casually deciding when he's gonna whack you. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you not noticing? I was like, well, he's not noticing he's what. Thinking. He is distracted by my amazing expanding English. <laughs> oh, Jesus, what the hell? I just noticed it. <laughs> I'm willing to admit that the movie is the worst thing ever, Jesus you know? Christ. I consider it to be like... Oh, now I get level, what you're doing. I get what you're doing, too. But... Can we have a Terminator be a girl? Oh, my goodness, it's the cops! <laughs> That was the only entertaining scene in the movie for me. I went and said, smooth. <laughs> you are a smart boy. Ooh. Kristan... Kristani Loken. Once again, this was done much better in Spongebob. I'm just saying. Okay. Wait, 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 I don't remember SpongeBob. any <laughs> augmentation scene in Spongebob. Well, they, they were man boobs, but you know. <laughs> Talking about David Hasselhoff's man boobs. Oh, oh, oh yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least those ones are useful. <laughs> T three for me. All I can say is that Had... he's got man tits that can go immediately to bikini bottom. Uh... That did not sound right. We'll... we'll talk about David Hasselhoff another time too. Will maybe. We? For what purpose? He's got significance in film. Does he? Other than saving SpongeBob, what is there to talk about, what is there to talk about in terms of movies? Like, maybe the first, maybe the first, first and second season of America's Got Talent. Movie. Adam Sandler movie. Oh, hey, I just talked about a ride. We're we're allowed TV shows and stuff. And what are you gonna talk about, by the way? <laughs> uh, we're talking about a franchise here. The fact that we're talking about rides and TV shows is merely a matter of you know necessity through 
But if it ta if it counts regard if it if it counts on the context, then it's worth talking about. But we can't bring up a topic that's mostly TV show. <laughs> or it would be called a television ro royale. Exactly. Then. It, 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 so, we, there was an episode where we talked about TV shows. I know, yes, and there was a loophole because they were based on movies. Anyways, loophole, anyways, loophole. loopholes. I always do Just loopholes. Read over anyways, your contract your... again. That's all you gotta do. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there's a contract? Contract. Why are we <laughs> stalling talking about Terminator Three? Because nobody wants so to talk awesome. about Terminator Three. Come because on. it's boring. Talk about. That movie was terrible. Yeah. No, to, <laughs> what, what are you to, talking Terminator about? Terminator Three. I don't want to talk what? about the Terminator trying to fight against Blood Rain, okay? Come on, she was the best thing about the movie. Well, uh, wait, she, there are other ways that we can get female Terminator she, action, I'm just saying. I mean, Chris, Johnny Loki, Loken, Loken, she, of course, before Blood Rain, she was a good time as she acts. I mean, of course, when she came into... The present, uh, she was naked and oh, guy issues. I, I like it's they, more. It's um, more than just that. I mean, I think I, I think that she. Yeah, it's more than that. It's way more than that. But yeah, she had like the uh, still cold, like no emotions kind of thing going, and she acted like a robot at least. And you, and you have to. Yeah, she. Yeah, she acted like a. Her her take on the on the character was just sort of an uptight bitchy, you know, uh, yeah. Terminator. But um... the the thing that I like the most about the film is the action set pieces, mm. especially the chase scene with the crane. Oh yeah, slamming slamming Arnold through mm. through buildings. That that was like the best thing about the movie. Otherwise, the move movie is just. For me, at least, just fall flat. Like the 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 plot, the story, just didn't. The ending, the twist ending, just like. You, <clears throat> you think okay, that was I'm a done. problem? I I saw I saw I this movie at the drive-ins, and I remember it being paired with the Italian Job, and it's funny how I liked that film better than Terminator Three, but I'll still regard that any film I see at the drive-in at least has some nostalgic value. Terminator 3 I saw again recently and the only thing I actually praise it for are the action scenes. Everything else is so really retcon and forced. Like you have that whole thing with the T-800 you know, oh I'm an obsolete motto and they have like these little canister nuclear batteries in my chest and I don't remove them they'll cause me to explode. I always saw that as like explosive poop. For some reason, I don't know why. Well, for crying out loud, it's okay. new. Hey, 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 it's nuclear waste. It has to go somewhere. Um, it's um, it's. Do we need to talk about robotic it's, anatomy in this? It's <laughs> Chekhov. It's Chekhov C four Morgan. The problem. Okay, that definitely. Uh, moving on. Um, I'm not gonna make that joke. Hey, hey, no, go on. he shoves a cancer down the female Terminator's throat. I'm not even gonna go that far. Um, okay. Yeah, the go. problem with Terminator 3 is that after the action, it tries to have a narrative, but it sort of knows that it's done everything it can in its path to actually do something like that. Instead, they just throw stuff at us like, oh, we can't prevent Judgment Day. Oh, we can somehow prevent Judgment Day. And they have, like, that whole thing going to... Is it Cyberdyne or Skynet For this time? For this time, you guys. Oh, um, no, it was, um... Oh, what the fuck was it? It was a, it was a research s s uh, company now. They changed into, like, a... I forgot the acronym. God damn Whatever it. Whatever it is. So they think they can... It's a research... So they think they can stop it, and, like, the dead is all like, oh, we're gonna go network or something like that, and the whole global country's getting affected by some giant virus. Show, don't tell. Please, show us the effects of this virus. If it's something the female yep. Terminator's doing, at least allude to it. And then... <sighs> The problem is that it runs out of steam. It runs out of steam so easily in that first third that when you get to those two thirds, it's trying to pick up itself with the reintroduction of the T-800, the fact that John Connor has a wife or something like that that she yeah, he's supposed to meet up with, and that 
bleak ending where they can't even prevent it. Even as a kid, that really threw me off because it's like the movie's not over. Like they go into the bunker and there's like, there's nothing here we can do. I felt, oh, that means the movie can't be over. You need like another extra 10 or 15 minutes. Nope, can't prevent it. He has to be the leader. She's the second in command. Launch the bitch seeking missiles and boom, there's the ending. I, that conclusion is just really way out of line. If they had at least something uh -huh. better to proceed, it, like maybe there's not going to be a judgment day. Like, maybe the whole idea is that they're not even going to that whole thing, like the rebellion of the robots, maybe it goes into something else. That would have been interesting. But there's so many different retcons they take here, which really bug me. Like, what the hell was up with John Connor and his ambition to be suicidal, swallowing pills and contemplating? For crying out loud, we're living in 2015. Well, you're not girl interrupted. You Terminator 3, for the love of God. If you, well, I, I, I understand what you're trying to do, movie. I understand what you're trying to do. You're trying to change the characters, because changing the characters gives them interesting motives. You have John Connor, who apparently in the second film was all like, okay, I'm going to be this leader. I'm going to go in, do the future. And the third one's like, oh, I am scared of the future. I must end it all. God damn Honestly, it, I, I didn't. I, I didn't well, think wait, that no. was so out of place at all because wait, honestly, wait, wait. the kid version of John Connor, he he had a lot of problems and he was just a kid. It it I don't think it's yep. totally out of line to portray adult John Connor as being seriously disturbed and contemplating suicide. I really don't see a problem with that at well, all. Actually, I he doesn't the kid. he doesn't have any direction in his life at the beginning of the film. He doesn't have yeah. a mother. Cause, he doesn't have anything. But but here's but here's the thing too the, because we have that what does skynet do hmm, if we can't find john connor we can kill all his like subjectory soldiers or whatever and have like this big massacre going on and if you're gonna kill these characters off who we don't have a feel for have no setup no build up at all why in the flying fuck should we care it's because they did the same it. sort of thing with the first all. film it, yeah, they did the same sort of thing with the first Sarah film. Connors. Did you kill? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Thank but we, 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 we had a setup to Sarah Connor. We had a setup to John Connor. When she's going around killing these random people, she's killing random people like a slasher villain. Yeah. And yeah, in, we don't know the, who the characters in are. In the rule of, like, Friday the 13th or whatever, we have an understanding for these characters and why they get killed off. So we feel bad for them because we don't exactly. want to see them die. I don't know about Here it's that. like, oh, we gotta do her. I really don't know about that. I think a lot. I, I don't know if you can necessarily say in the Friday the 13th movies that you really cared about these characters. I think you're, you're like they're, they're they're cannon fodder, and the idea is that you're watching people get killed and it's fun. It's not that different did from you, that. Did you feel bad for Crispin Glover when he got a cork through the hand and then hatchet to the head? No, it's because that was Crispin Glover and he was. Well, okay, some of the characters you focused on, but other ones you really didn't. Like, can you name me, like, any of the actual characters in Friday the 13th Part 2? Like, give me a name. Just one name. George? George? Bullshit. Oh, you pulled that dude. out of your ass. You just said George because I, I mentioned okay. Crispin Glover. No. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Come nope. Is, no, it's uh, it's uh, answer A, actually. Well, yeah, wrong, uh, I, I wrong, wrong, what they wrong killed Crispin Bob. Glover film. I really miss Bob. Bob was a character I was very invested in, then they kill Bob. Poor Bob. <laughs> so, uh... Oh here's the thing, here's and the thing. Never, Morgan was talking about... we never found out what happened to Paul. Paul. Oh, long live. RP. Whatever. Oh, oh man. The thing, Mor the thing Morgan was talking about with being suicidal, there was... Like, something in the script, early drafts, indicated that John Connor wanted to commit suicide because there's no judgment day. There was nothing to hope for for his future. There was nothing for him to do. He had nothing to go for. And that was very dark. It was very dark, and then they decided not to do that, sort of. They kind of made him suicidal in the film in a way. Like, he, he was very desperate, like, scared of the future because there's no judgment. What's he going to do now? He, 
He's been told he's going to be a future resistant fighter for this big war, but it's not going to happen now because they stopped it in T2. Well, mm -hmm. When I saw this film, I literally felt bored by it. Like, I watched, like, yeah, Morgan's right about a few things. Like, you don't really care about these characters. Like, I didn't care about, like, I noticed that I really loved Sarah Connor, and I was so sad when she left, when she was dead. And yes, I went, yes, they, I, that, that was the biggest thing. It was like, what? You killed off Sarah Connor in this yeah, film? Yeah, How she, dare you? She's yeah, the best she character in the Terminator awesome. franchise. Like, I, I uh, John, I was like, why? Really? Well, and I, it's, and between well, movies, it, too. Like, the freaking captain from Jaws. Just kill him off between movies. Who cares? It's not like it's the most popular character or anything. Quint, no! Well, <laughs> well, here's the here's the other thing that I wanted to mention earlier. Uh, I think... I think uh, Linda Ronstadt and James Cameron... I mean, no, no. Linda Hamilton, not Linda Ronstadt. Whoa. Linda <laughs> Ronstadt! Yeah, wow. Where the hell were you? <laughs> wow, Mario, we're... I mean, James. <laughs> James, you pulled it right out of your ass there. Yeah, um, Hamilton. Hamilton. And I wouldn't make a mistake like that. Hamilton. Linda Hamilton and James Cameron had a bit of a beef with each other, and that's why she wanted out of the franchise. Well, and that, and the thing with T3 is, is that um, uh, they were, Arnold wanted James Cameron to direct, and of course he was like, oh, no, 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 I'm not, not going to do it. And James Cameron suggested, like, okay, Arnold, just do the film, but ask for a crazy amount of money. <laughs> just get paid a ridiculous amount of money. James, I'm sorry, but I have to do this. <laughs> Isn't that cute? But that's wrong! <laughs> <laughs> you <Yeah>, boys. <laughs> But, um, oh, that's it's, what they do. They're known to do that. You boys and your it's, toys. It's, <laughs> uh, what? It's, it's, Are you talking about my nail filing? You're the only weird... No, actually, you and Matt are the weird people here, but... <laughs> no, you cannot say that James is the weird guy here, considering with my minion goggles. I was yeah, gonna say, the... who's wearing the minion goggles? The minion Mad Max goggles. Yeah, that's true. So, oh, yeah. it's a weird thing be with Sarah Connor. It's weird because they're she dies from leukemia, I think, in the yeah, film. Yes, they yes, leukemia. Leukemia. So, so, well, I kind of men I'll mention this later on, but they flip that around in this series. They kind of they she dies. She's supposed to die from cancer in the series, which is weird. Like, if you're gonna do, but of course. I'm going. I'm way ahead of myself Leukemia here. Leukemia is but... is cancer. It is. It, it is a form of cancer, Mike. Uh, trial. Me don't know stuff. <laughs> me 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 don't know anything about medical things. I don't don't go through that that that. Am I? Doy. Am I allowed? Did you like have that as like this big talking point, Mike? Like I can't believe they got these diseases mixed up. <laughs> and now it's just like, oh no, mm -hmm. never mind. I was wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I was wrong, and yep, that was something I was thinking in my head. It was like something I noticed, and now I now feel bad we're now. Attack oh, yeah. Okay, so uh, it it just and then you got Kate Brewster in T three, the 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 supposed future wife of John yeah, she's Connor. The second in command, but see, my problem with T three is part of the fact, yeah, it's boring as hell. I didn't even think the action scenes were good in this movie. Like, I literally was watching, mm. like, about halfway through, and I felt bored. Like, I don't remember the ending at all. And that's pretty I'm sad. I'm hurted by that. I'm sorry, but that... I mean, the action... The action scenes were the best I, fucking I, part of the film, I mean... I didn't think it was that interesting. I just went, uh, really? I thought the action scenes were better in Terminator 2, and, um... I went and saw the... And I didn't like Kate Brewster, either. I was like, compared to Sarah, Sarah, she's just, she's not very interesting. She's not, she's, she's just She's very shoehorned into the film. She's just there. Just, and, they just, yeah. just there. It's like, oh, hey, 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 here's your future wife, Johnny. Like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, you, yeah, here's your, you're meeting your future wife. Oh, how did you do like that? They need, oh, yeah. Like, they just need they a good, like, 
They need, like, a good guy girl representative for reasons. Well, reasons. Yeah, but that, that might be true, but that doesn't make her a good character. I mean, if she's just existing. That's why I said reasons. Reasons. Okay. Alright. So right. I just didn't like the movie at all. Like, I felt uninterested. I felt bored. Even Arnold was boring me, which is pretty sad, too. I Talk just. To Talk to the hand. Well, I have a, I have two and a half. Do you want to see? <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. Don't start hand jokes on me. I will get you back. <laughs> so about the Sarakana Chronicles, how does that hold up? Because I, I, I never was saw the show. Well, I never saw it. I want to. So here's the thing. Jade and I have seen the show. I have the damn show on DVD, season one and two. Um. So, T Sarah Connor Chronicles completely forgets the third film. That's erased. Uh oh, here we go straight. again. It hasn't happened yet. Like, it takes place between the second and third movie. Eh, I've heard that it's... I've heard that the creators wanted to bring Sarah Connor back and they just, like, ignore the third but, film. But completely. John Connor is notably younger and in a, an earlier stage of his life than in the third movie. Right, right, because it takes place after T2, like... She, he's like, I think it was like five years yeah, after. Yeah, he's a teenager now, T2. and I just want to point out for the record that John Connor is a teenager in Sarah Connor Chronicles is way less of an emo teenager than John Connor as a ten-year-old in the second movie. Just throwing <laughs> that out there. T Thomas Decker plays John Connor in the series was like the, you know, there was a weird scene him playing John Connor because I remember seeing him in a previous series by Disney. How I Shrunk the Kids, the TV series, as Nikki. Oh, oh God, Nick's I didn't even thing. know that existed. They played... That did exist. They got that kid to play John Connor? Yes. Oh, my God. The, yep. Dude. I know, I was looking at... I watched it the first time, I was like, wait, I know this kid somewhere, wait. And, and I looked it up. Oh, my God, this kid was in the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids TV series. And We're he was in all good hands up, all... now, right? Uh... He, he... I mean... He he's a typical teenager trying to understand, you know, how to be a leader and getting, uh, trying to be a good leader. But Sarah kind of doesn't really want him to do all that stuff because he has these ideas, ideas, and he, Sarah's like, no, 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 we don't do this. Because there's there's one episode where he wanted to do something and Sarah kind of goes along with it for a while, and then later on he's like, this is a bad idea. This is Run, well, there is also the fact that he really doesn't want to deal with this stuff. And in the pilot, it he, he, like, has this conversation with Sarah where he's basically, like, telling her that he wants her to solve the problem because he doesn't want Skynet to happen because he does not... He, he feels cheated, you know, because he thought that he wouldn't have to be the leader of a rebellion anymore because they got rid of all the robot stuff in the second movie and all right. that stuff. So after that, they hadn't heard from the Terminator until the start of Sarah Connor Chronicles. So now he's all like, what the hell, Mom? I thought we were getting rid of Skynet. And so because John Whoa. really doesn't want to lead a rebellion or anything, Sarah's just like, okay, fine, you little whiner. And then they go on a mission to stop Skynet. Well, that's the thing. It, it, at the beginning of the pilot, they established... Well, of course, it starts off with a hazy Sarah Connor dream sequence, which kind of focuses on the past too it's like the she has these throughout the whole series she, she has these dream sequences and they and it just for me it just didn't i i kind of understand they they build this character more because she talks she narrates throughout the whole series and she has these ideas and talks about have, you know the atomic bomb i have and to all admit when stuff. i first saw the pilot i didn't, didn't realize it was a dream and i thought that they were like gonna do this thing where like, what if John Connor had actually gotten killed by a Terminator? And I was like, whoa, that's a really interesting idea. But that's not what they did, so. No, it wasn't. It is kind of yeah, a cool idea, though. Like, what if, I don't know, they, they tried to play that up, time travel-wise. Like, what if John Connor actually that, got killed and it was up to Sarah? What would happen? That would be, that would be interesting, actually. That would be interesting to figure out what the timeline would be and what would happen and how Sarah would do it. Um, um, but, yeah, they, some, 
somehow, of course, it's like, oh, T2, they got everything. But no, 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 no. They had to put a way to bring it all back. It's like, oh, there's another way the Terminators come back. Oh, Skynet's still going to happen. Jum Jum Judgment is going to happen somehow. And they uh, send a Terminator back to kill off John and Sarah um, called Cromarty, which is a weird name for a freaking... It's not, they don't give like a T name. It was like Cromarty. They give they actually give names to Terminators. Um, they uh, John Connorson's a protector, just like in the first film and second film. And it's Sem Summer Glau. Oh, a Summer teenage Glau. Teenage girl. A teenage girl. Want to say that again? Teenage. Seventeen years teenage. old. Under yeah, age. Yeah, teenage. Everybody. Yep. Here's a yeah. Throwing Here's that a out there. For the individuals who might be conveniently forgetting that from time to time. Yes. Oh, now I get what you mean. Here's a question I have to say at this point. How, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this end of the war thing, how much time do they have to send all these people back into, into the past to fix certain things? If it's the end of the war. I don't know. It's all very convoluted, to be honest. I don't pay it's, attention. It's very wibbly wobbly, tiny, whiny stuff. I just kind of go stuff. with it, like, oh, this person's back. He's she's a freedom fighter. Oh, this person's back. They're evil. This person's a Terminator. This person's not. We. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's a lot easier than and that's trying the thing. to like, keep a flow chart. Yeah, it's the timeline of the whole franchise is just all screwy. Mm -hmm. Trying to figure that out. Um, oh, so but. But, uh, yeah, and, uh, oh, I... Like, it's not just Summer Cloud. There's, like, all these different people that are, like... Yes. ...they're from the past, and they, like... Yes. Each other ...and some of them have, like, allegiances that you're not sure about at first, and then, like, there's a bunch of plot twists, and then this person turns to mm -hmm. dozen, and it's like, da 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 da, -da. <sighs> it, it just gets very, like, jogging to see all these people, like, wait, they send this... Because, uh, first off, Summer Glau's character is named Cameron as a reference Get to James it. Cameron. Get it? Get it? Her name's Cameron. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, they, uh, I think, well, have some, basically in the pilot, just basic, basic knowledge for the pilot is, uh, can't, of course, Terminator comes in, trying to kill him, Cameron comes in, tries to save him, and, uh, they end up, uh, Time hopping from 1999 to 2007. I don't know why they couldn't kept it in the 90s. I don't know why, but they jumped to 2007. They want to make current, I guess, and they have to somehow adjust to 2007. All the all new technologies from 1999 and all that, and trying to survive from these Terminators tra trying it's to come back and kill them. It's obvious why they jumped to 2007 so that they didn't have to spend the budget money on dating the settings. That's right, because it was during that time. It was like 2000. 2009, the show already had a bunch of budget to blow on the friggin' robot effects. They could only, <laughs> they had to, do, they had to cut corners here and no. there. You know what I mean? Oh, they cut corners for sure. If you, you see the CGI on the ter on Terminators, it's bad. It's TV bad. It's it, it's a TV budget. It, they couldn't do the excellent, you know, Terminator CGI effects from the films. No, no, no. It's very crappy CGI Things like the Terminators. Early Buffy. Hmm. Think. Yeah. Instead of, like, monsters and shit. It's very, like, ugh. It, there is interesting concepts they put in there. The, the, like, Kermardi, the robot they try to kill in the pilot, like, he comes through the portal, time hop into 2007 through a head, that his head pops off and they get killed him, and he is in the future with them, and he tries to build himself up, you know, yes, the Terminator can rebuild himself after being blown to bits. So he tries to build, build himself, and... They try to, he tries to get the human skin on, you know, trying to look like a human. And the process of it, you know, he goes through each little step, and the people are like, "Who's this guy? Who's this guy? What's what's going on with this guy?" And it's very interesting to see how there's a scientific like formula to actually do this in TV world or real life in the series where they uh, it needs a lot of blood, and he go inside the bath. He, gets a scientist to do it for him he goes in the bathtub full of blood and all of a sudden you see coming out of the the blood you know and it's all human skin like he grew skin on top of the uh, robot exoskeleton 
and he, you know, the eyelids are all closed and the mouth's all shut. It's very creepy looking. And he's like, you have to cut it open, cut it open, and then he has to go to a plastic surgery to get the face re readjusted to make him look like a human. It's very interesting, but it's just very jarring how they send so many people in the past. Like, they send uh, a group of resistant fighters from the future, like how they did with Kyle Reese, but it's a group of people, including uh, Kyle Reese's brother, uh, Derek, I believe, played by Brian Austin Green. Yeah, Derek. And it was... It was just, why the brother? And they do do show Kyle Reese in the well, show later on. Asking, but was... hey, why isn't Kyle Reese the more prominent part of this franchise? So there you go. There's Kyle Reese's brother for you. Yeah, we just have we just put the brother in there. Oh, you didn't know he had a brother? Oh, there you go. He has a brother now. Who will and never be seen it's... again. And he's like John never. Connor's uncle, which is kind of yes. a thing. That is kind of weird thinking about that now. It's like, oh, uh, it's John Carter's uncle. Yeah. So weird. Um, but it's it's a lot to think through because this series makes you wonder who built Skynet, who who this, who that. And then there's this. There's another Terminator later on. Like I think in season two they introduce her, or maybe in the end of season one. Yeah, it's been a while I'll since I, I didn't. The... I can't remember. Yeah, it's it's a female Terminator, like in the third film. And but she's like got she's amb like... ambiguous like motivations, and then it turns out she's like also against Skynet. But she's yeah, it was and she weird. has like her own separate yeah. mission to like help to stop the yeah. war. And it's kind of cool. She she's a cool character. She's just oh, kind of yeah. confusing to follow. Yeah, she is, and Doesn't... and she's played by um, she's played by the lead singer of garbage you know the uh oh, she's the same redhead? Yeah, the redhead yeah the same band who sang the the world's not enough theme song for james bond and that's actually the inspiration behind that because the music video featured her as a robot in that music video it's interesting i was like wait now a musician's playing you know, an actor thing but well, you know, it's, it's a very not unheard of it's, for mm -hmm. band members to no, step not. into television acting alice cooper did it's it a bit that. Yeah, yeah. I was just, I'm not complaining about it. I'm just saying it's interesting to know that. Sarah Connor Chronicles is just... And here's another thing I noticed. It, it, it kind of doesn't... It does feature Sarah Connor, but not a lot of her person. It kind of focuses on John a bit, you know, kind of... Sure, she narrates a couple, all the episodes, and she tries to figure stuff out, but it's... You don't see her a lot, I, think I noticed. I it's kind of sort of both their stories. I mean, she's got her own stuff to figure out, like the leukemia thing and the whole, you know, how is she going to protect her son by stopping Skynet like she sort of promised him because he whined her about it. Well, and that's the thing. They uh, time hop over Sarah Connor's death. So she's technically alive, and she's also worried about, you know, when am I going to die? When am I going to die? Because she knows all this information about the when but now she skipped over and now she's worried about when I'm, when do i get cancer when do i die and she goes to the doctor and she gets all that it's like mrs connor you're still a lot uh i shouldn't even say that they're not even con there they took uh kyle reese's name so they're sarah reese and john reese so it's mrs reese uh you're fine uh you're clean as a ho uh, healthy as a horse I mean, there's no cancer yet it's it's just... <laughs> where am i gonna find horse. all the weapons to stick in my casket <laughs> there was like a bunch of nonsense with like this male love interest that she sort of had that like knew her and was something of a character a bit ish oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that was yeah a little that's yeah, a little his character bit. was terribly uninteresting though you know who i liked no i liked the police who? captain you remember him who, oh, like, you're talking tracked, about... who like was tracking them down cause he, and, like, yes he found you're out, talking like, about the Inspector um slash Willem Dafoe from Boondock Saints kind of character in that he was like tracking yeah. them down, like trying to stop them because they're criminals. But then he learns more and more about the resistance and like that they yeah. were right all along. And then he's like helping them. And he's like, I always love that character, the police yeah. chief enemy turned ally. I'm a sucker for it. Yeah, he's yeah he he was interesting actually because he was there from all the start and notice all this and trying to follow the case and all the people in the office like oh you're 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 just Wild Goose Chase. 
This is all a wild goose chase, but he's like, I, I'm determined to do it. Yeah, he was like FBI, I believe. He was in the FBI. He was an FBI agent I doing that. It was that. Something like that. It was kind of... The, sh the show ran for two seasons. It got canceled. And actually, to this date, actually, is, they're actually at the campaign for having the season three of... The records Sarah... in its time for being one of the highest rated shows on TV. Like, sci-fi shows. And then it got canceled anyway. Why? I don't know. Fuck suck. Yeah. Yeah, Fox sucks. Fox has a reputation. They suck. I mean, sure. How do you get to see the show? I mean, it's on DVD. If you want to be interested to see what the timeline or what the continuation of the second film is, pick it up, check it out. It's only... watchable than Terminator 3. It has infinitely more girl power, I must add. Yes, a lot of girl power, indeed. If you like something and if you, like Sarah And if you Sarah don't Connor, mind the 17-year-old robot getting sexualized way too goddamn much. Which is my main problem with it. I, why does Summer Glau keep playing supposedly badass characters to Fi Fi who are just there to be crucified and made sexy? Like, God, how many times is she gonna just, like, carelessly undress herself while John watches it, like, um, I'm uncomfortable. But I think. No, you're not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh no, I'm aroused oh by God. a robot. This is so wacky. <laughs> So we have two movies left. I know. Shush. I know. I know. So after the Sarah Connor Chronicles, I said so actually at the same time as the show actually, uh they decided to do try to re kind of reboot the series in a way back in two thousand and nine. They uh they wanted to do like a future war trilogy, like they wanted to show showcase the future war of the Terminator franchise yeah. and Ambitious. That was the result of a very ambitious project by them. It was like, okay, ambitious. but this, this was... This is going to be so big, you guys. This is going to be like the next big thing, and everyone's going to love it. It's going to make good millions of did. money, and it's going to be so popular, and yeah. Chris Bale's well, going to be so easy to work with. It's going to be amazing, you guys. Yes. It's going to be great. Nothing's so, going to go wrong at all. Oh. Terminator Salvation is the film. Um... Actually, can one of you guys explain the whole Christian Bale rant? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got Everybody it. knows about it. Yeah. Okay, so I... just to sum it up, apparently there's this um, one of the one of the workers of the crew, like um, during one of the scenes when Christian Bale was acting, he was walk. Uh, one of the crew members was walking behind the director. Apparently, that really threw Christian Bale off, and what happens is that he went into this major rant with this guy. But like going at him like how he's unprofessional and stuff like that like he he pretty much stopped everything to pay attention to this one guy what happened was that apparently someone was recording it it landed on the in, on the internet and it became one of the big like it became like a f internet phenomenon like everyone knew about christian bale's explosion i mean i it feel kind glorious. of bad because you know it's Everybody has, like, a really bad day where they just kind of let loose and attack somebody, you know? Like, that's mm -hmm. the thing that happens to a lot of people at work. And we, we're we not all famous people who can have, like, that shit recorded and made viral and get judged for it to this very day. I mean, I also feel bad for the guy who got yelled at because, you know, he's probably, like, a maintenance worker and he's, like, totally no, underpaid. No, 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 no. I really he's, need to do uh... this. I really need to do this, but I got to. What? Hold on, hold on. What the f shit, you prick? Sorry. Oh my god, I god. Just sorry. Think for one f second. I heard I heard I heard it. It. Am I going to walk around and rip your f lights down in the middle of the scene? Don't check Christmas lights. I put them up to make everyone happy. Then why the f are you walking right through? Uh, da -da -da -da, like this in the background. What the f is it with you? Well, you were going to owe a fortune to the square jar. You got any <laughs> about you have hey, it's point. distracting uh, having somebody walking up behind Bryce in okay, the middle of the scene. I'm not, I can't Give me a tell. Answer. I, I don't get it. What don't it's you get about it? Jackass I don't we need another it. Terminator. I just, I, I don't, I don't get it. Oh, and uh, by the way, sorry, I, I, I ate that last piece of pie that you were saving for yourself. Oh, good for you. <laughs> and how was it? It was good. I hope it was 
Good because it's useless now, isn't it? Wait, it's nourishing me, so that's that's useful. <laughs> set, man, you're amateur. I don't know that word. Stay off the <laughs> set, man. All right. All right, let's All right. go again. Okay. Can we just take a minute. Let's not take a minute. Let's go again. I gotta pee, and I want to walk around some more, but I do a lot of teens going. You're unbelievable. <laughs> I, I just don't understand. Uh, you don't understand what it's like working with actors. That's what that is. I don't. I don't think that's what that. That's is. what that is, man. I'm telling you. My family's coming to town. Do you mind pretending that I'm the director? I want to. You don't please, shut please up don't for a me. second. Don't right? hurt me, Mr. Bale. I'm gonna go. Do you want me to go <laughs> trash your lights? No. Do you want me to <laughs> trash them? No, I don't want you to trash them. You do it one <laughs> time, and I ain't walking on this set if you're still hired. Sorry, it's my first day. I'm serious. You're a nice guy. You're a nice guy. I don't feel like a nice guy. But I don't cut it when you <laughs> around like this on set. Jeez, you punch your mother with that mouth? Seriously, man, you and me, we're unprofessionally. Wait, just professionally? <gasps> Are you asking me out on a date? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's actually really good. <laughs> it's a really good parody of it. It's really oh good. Oh my god, that's beautiful. You're gonna have to send that to me because that was great. We know we're yeah. trying to... Is there a video with that? Yes. There's no. Well, the video is just uh, the tape recorder playing the tape. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay. Yeah, it's not, not, not. It's, it's not reacted, I, uh, but. I do have, I I do have a bit of a bit of backstory to tell behind this this rant that that was made so famous. Um, my neighbor. I have neighbors that work for ILM. And yes, they were working on that movie. They had stories to tell that were going that were going through um, uh, that were going through uh, ILM at the time through the ranks uh, about the production of the film. One of which uh, one of which also concerned Kyle Reese, uh, the actor who played Kyle Reese, Anton Yelchin. Anton Yeltich. Saying saying he was a bit of a spoiled brat. To work with, but um, uh, the story behind this particular rant is they, uh, that is the director of photography, I believe that they were yelling yep. at. And yep, it's correct. everyone who worked on the film, it, it was pretty much like a, a pool, a betting pool or something. They said if anything was going to happen on this film, that guy would be the cause of it. And because because uh, you know he he is just, he does that sort of thing. He sort of walks around and gets the shots or something like that. And mm -hmm. so he 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 kind of had this coming. Yeah. So yeah, he just basically like walked behind Bryce Delaware Howard in one scene, and the Christian Bale just just flipped a lid over it. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, in the commentary of when we watched it, um, Matt was like, uh, you gotta point that out? What scene is that? And I was like, I don't even know what scene that would be. Like, it had to be the one with Bryce Delaware Howard playing Kate. But I couldn't even tell you that when that would happen in the film. But it was just, it's just interesting how they just went so viral. That was like the biggest thing back in 2009. And, uh, it actually became more popular than the movie itself. Ironically, <laughs> yes, it's infamous. It's infamous. More entertaining than the movie itself. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, Terminator Salvation, and it, I, I think it, it, it's an interesting idea to show what the future wars were going to be like, and mm -hmm. to me, uh, the, I, I actually thought it had some promise because. Uh, the director of it, Mick G, had, uh, dare I say it, some guilty pleasure territory on my end for the first uh, Charlie's Angels movie, which was his directorial <gasps> debut. But mm -hmm, even with yes. that movie, he he confessed on the DVD that he had basically just taken inspiration slash ripped off every everything else that he could think of. And oh, yeah. with, uh, whether it was uh, other other action movies or like The Matrix or or uh, uh, 50s 60s musicals, um, so I think so I think 
when it comes to making a Terminator film, uh, he'd be he'd be a good director for it because he's good at imitating other styles. And what and you know you sit back and watch this movie and for a lot of the time it feels like he's Im- imitating something that's not a Terminator movie. There we go. See, I'm just gonna objectively this movie was more well made than Terminator Three. But Terminator 3, while being kind of boring, was at least distinctively Terminator. Like, I watched Terminator Salvation, and it, like, this could have been a movie about anything. Because it was just so generic, and so not at all. There was, it didn't feel like the franchise, the the tone of the franchise. It didn't feel fanservice-y. It just felt like I was watching some post-apocalyptic robot movie starring Christian Bale. It just... It was, I was just it so reminded bored. Me. I was just uh, so not it, in the Terminator you know, it jazz was like, dude. It's Mad Max it starring like Mad... everyone's favorite newsie. <laughs> it, yeah, I just, it just it seemed like a Mad Max film. Uh, it wasn't sandy enough to be Mad Max. It was more like, I don't know, a Fallout movie. Something yeah, like that. Actually, the yeah, Matrix. Actually, wanna... It had a lot in common with The Matrix. Yeah, actually, or maybe Transformers thing... in some parts too. Yeah, yeah. I just want to mention that the funny thing about Terminator Salvation is that the best way to describe the problems is the same um, issues that everyone has with plenty of the first-person shooters uh, nowadays, like Fallout or Gears of War, or Call of Duty. Number one that I find extremely boring and just unappealing is the color palette of the movie. Because the only colors that I've seen there so far were just a lot of gray, a lot of brown, some black, and maybe a bit of white. Literally, that's it. It's just, it's just like, it's really dull to look at, like, at first glance. It's just, there's nothing appealing really to look at. Uh, number two, what I really find just boring is pretty much Christian Bale and Sam Worthington's performance. Now, Sam Worthington, I mean, it's Sam Worthington. He's he's always been playing, like, planks of wood. Like, the only ex- a bit of an exception would probably be Avatar, but that's pretty much it. But then, like, Christian Bale, like, holy crap. Like, he was, like, he just looked blank. He, he might as well would have been a Terminator himself because, like, he barely what? showed any expressions. He Honestly, was falling I'm... down. He was, like, falling down from a from a helicopter. He looked, like, expressionless there. Honestly, this plays off of what I said about how it doesn't really surprise me that he, like, went off the rails at one point, like, because he was so stressed. Because I got the feeling he was not having any fun making mm-hmm. this movie. Well, like, yeah. something about this, like, this crew made this production a living hell for him i don't know what or how but clearly he was well, not having a good time here's some fun fact for you he was originally written for marcus played by sam worthington um but he bale insisted he insisted he played john connor in the film they had to rewrite the script in order for him to play john connor mm-hmm. interesting who was gonna play john connor I died. I died. Wouldn't even know. I wouldn't even know. But it was just something my, during the script process. My problem with the movie is simply this: the idea of the Terminators, at least the first two movies, with the exception of the third, is that it's a fight for the future, not a fight in the future. But okay, they're gonna show that this whole dystopia, uh, places like with the battle for the machines and everything, that could be interesting, but then it becomes like every war movie ever made, and then it's Schindler's List with the humans getting captured by the machines, and then it's Hunt for the Red October and everything, and it's just so all over the map. And even if they try to do something original, it still has the cliches of the previous Terminator movies. You have a naked man rising up from the mud, supposedly may or may could not be a Terminator. We never know until later on, but we know it's going to be a Terminator anyway. And then we have, like, a fight... Yeah, and then we have, like, a fight in the factory. Um, And then that whole thing, you know, trusting the kid and everything. Even if it's trying to do, like, original stuff, it's still taking the same tropes, because it's like, oh, it's not a Terminator film without these sort of things. My biggest bone I have to pick with is the motivation of... Skynet in this one. Uh, 
they're not only capturing humans and not only trying to take over the world, but now they're trying to make a new form of machine that's like part man and part human. And Mm -hmm. to me, it doesn't make any sense, at least to me, because Skynet has taken the world, it's capturing people, so why in the world would they want to create a creation that has human emotion when already their robots taking over the world with exoskeletons and flying bots. Is that not even good enough? Okay, I, okay. I, here's, here's, here's my theory. <sighs> They've successfully taken over the world. They Any problems that could be like present, they're like just zapping into time travel past them to take care of it, so they're not really worrying about it. They got all the humans, they've like got this entire emotionless world going on, and they're a big thinking computer. It's possible they might just be bored. Well, yeah, you know, like, I... God, what else are we gonna do? I don't know, let's make a science project. Well, the, the or... fact that, well, the, well, the fact that they go all Pinocchio with it just really feels silly and stupid to me. You have Helen Bottom Carter's character as the program saying, we could be anybody you want in shapeshifting like all the people. It's like, really? Now really? Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. Or I like might actually have to rip off the Terminator. Let's rip off X Men too. Why not? And here's and, with, and unfortunately I have to go into a little bit of spoiled territory. Here's my biggest problem. You have the ending where John Connor, um, no Marcus, sacrifices himself. John Connor's like, oh no, I gotta save you. I gotta, you know, do CPR with these two electrical wires. You could have just picked them up and put them in a camp, took like a car battery, you know, you know, frying them up or something like that. But no, you have to do it on the spot. And then he gets like stabbed through the chest. I get somewhere near the heart. How does a man stay living that long? Is beyond me. Like he goes from Again, getting he stabbed. He, got, he didn't like get stabbed. Giant... He got him freaking impaled. Yes, impaled. Thank you. Not only impaled. are they ripping off the matrix, and then you know, so they drag him to the helicopter, the and then they fly him to this, and they fly him to this other base, and he's slowly dying. It's like, oh no, we can do a heart transplant, and everything. So now he's man machine. Okay, the original ending, from what I heard, originally had them grafting his skin onto the body of Marcus, but apparently that got leaked on the internet, so that had to be rewritten as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, ugh. Although I will say, I do, I might actually have another theory to why, like, um, to, about the, like, the Skynet's, uh, Ide- ideology, into, like what they want to do with the humans. They could mm-hmm. have seen P- Planet of the Apes and go, I got an idea. And that's it. <laughs> if that's the case, why didn't they, and... just, if that's oh. the case, why didn't they just invent Haley Joel Osment? <laughs> a- did I AI forget? artificial intelligence people. Did I forget to say that Terminator Salvation takes place in 2018. Yeah, it's 2018. Uh, yeah. So, so we only got... That was great. Uh, and you can't, even, you can't even say this was an 80s movie and can get away with it. This was made in 2009. Why yeah. the hell did they yeah. think that they could get away with making this movie take place 10 years later and not become super dated About, to the yeah. like, Come on, man. Exactly. Um, and I want to stress this enough... Supposedly there was going to be a sequel where they had John Connor going back in time, trying to save Linda Hamilton's character, sorry, Sarah Connor, and they somehow explain why the T-1000 looks like Robert Patrick. In a sense, I'm kind of glad they didn't live with that, but in another sense, ugh. Why does that need to be explained? You know what forget- Just assume it takes on a different human form, like... Well, you can't... Here's the thing we forgot to mention for T3. There was a deleted scene explaining why Arnold Schwarzenegger was the yes. T800 model. Yes. Ooh, oh, it's... God. <laughs> oh, God. Wait, okay, I guess I can kind of understand, like, questioning that because he was the original model in the first place and the idea seems right. to be that there's yep. different actors for different models. So I can understand wanting to answer that question. But why give a shit about Robert Patrick's, like choice in particular like he they made a human form it happens to look like robert patrick so what yeah yeah exactly because they they already tried to do it before t3 i mean they deleted scene alone they just they had arnold schwarzenegger it was a sergeant candy and he's got a southern accent (laughs) and he's like i've been chosen to be 
A T-800 and... Fuck yourself, Lab, it's so hilarious. Give me more. I need to jump to the right spot. I'm sorry, uh, again. It's so funny, it's just like, okay, I think I was deleted, because if it was in the film, that would have been totally... Balls to the wall crazy. You asked for it. Of course I did. Of course I did, because I... I was Chief Master Sergeant William Chandler. I was honored to be selected by CRS in the ongoing effort to save American lives. I don't know about that accent. We can fix it. Oh no, oh you can't. No, you Just can't. Delete the scene. Just delete the scene. Of them holding this mold and going, Ooh, it's me. <laughs> it was just hilarious, but uh, good thing they made the accent so much less conspicuous because yeah. that was their goal, right? To give him an accent that sounded totally normal and not at all completely distinctive. Might as well give him like the goofy voice. <laughs> was anyone able to, was anyone able to hear an audio? A bit, what? like just a tad. Oh, I heard it. I heard it. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It was hearable. It's good. It was hearable. Oh. Uh, it's hearable. I. Um. So. I kind of want to talk about my thoughts on the movie because I was the only one that seemed to like it. <laughs> well, I was gonna say I liked it too, actually. Well, for me, Fair I enough. thought it was better than the third one, mainly because at least I cared about something. I. What did you like care about? I liked the movie so much better just because I liked I liked hearing the story of John Connor, even though I thought Sam Worthington's character is worthless. Um, <laughs> um, I liked Worthington more like Worthington. I was really getting to worth like Worthington. Am I right? Ah. Yeah, am I right? Ah, 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 ah. I have a theory about Sam Worthington. I think uh, I, he was a guy who came out of nowhere, suddenly just had a string of blockbuster films. Was he created in a in a, a lab by James Cameron? Because well, he, James Cameron did James Cameron didn't recommend Sam Worthington to McGee for the film, so I mean I'm not surprised. You look at uh, and and here's the and here's the thing. Um, pretty soon Jack Cornier would be the same thing. Well, I don't Jack like... Cornier. Kit. I, I... Kyle Reese uh, and Jenna Genesis. Oh. Um, Jai Courtney. Uh, uh, he's he's in Jai Courtney's in a string of blockbusters and people don't like him whatsoever because he stinks at acting apparently and then I'm guessing he's gonna disappear off the face of the earth. Anyways, anyway, Sam Worthington. Yeah. Sam Worthington, yeah. Where it's like, where is he now? He's he's just sort of sitting happy waiting on that Avatar sequel. Yeah, I just feel like he's kind of the failed experiment of what Chris Pratt is right now. Just the opposite. Well, like, the, and plus the fact that it doesn't help. I think yes. the yep. last movie oh after... was so terrible in Clash of the Titans, you guys. Like, yeah, that was about right. the same as, like, the, the last the time. The worst we performance, <sighs> like, ever. God, he was so growly and bland and awful and uninteresting and bland. Let's see. Well, just like, nice. I can't believe we were talking about Sam Worthington this long, and it never occurred to me that he played like the worst protagonist I've ever seen in a movie. He's still he's still acting now. See, so hasn't disappeared Clash per se, but not like big. Devin, just so you know, I hate Clash of the Titans possibly more than any movie in the world. I hate it so need... much. Have you at least um... seen the 1980s version? Like yes, original. I've seen the 1980s version. I wouldn't hate the movie nearly as much if I'd seen the 1980s version. If I hadn't seen the 1980s version. There you go. Okay, good. Good, good, good. At least... At least there's always that. Like, just remember, if you need to think of Clash of the Titans, always remember Ray Harryhausen. That's it's just so hard so, not to, like, automatically start comparing so, it. Well, if you just, just try. If you hate... Just try. I'm, I'm, I'm helping you out here. With Salvation, how can you hate it so much, even though it's scored by Danny Elfman? Yeah, that's one thing I liked about the movie. I 
I thought Danny Elfman did a great job scoring the I film. I don't miss that... Danny Elfman. I feel like he's sort of been, like, off the grid for a while. Although he did fantastic with Age of Ultron. Did you all know he did the soundtrack for Age of Ultron? Yeah, yeah I did. I haven't even seen yeah. that yet, but I didn't know that. That was he. It was a kick-ass soundtrack, to be honest. Uh, yeah, well, he I, always I think does of all good. this Hans, Hans Zimmer nonsense with the same soundtrack for every fucking movie. Let's bring back some Danny Elfman and some Alan Silvestri. Let's bring some like life back into these movie tracks. How about how oh. about it? We need another yes. Elmer Bernstein. We oh, had yeah. him. His name we need was another uh, James Horner. We had him. His name was James Horner. Uh, mm. Well, yeah. at, least, at least we still have uh, John Williams. Yeah, yeah, but he only does select projects nowadays. He's, like, half-retired. He'll, like, do a Star Wars sequel or two. He'll come back um, for Jurassic Park and, I don't know. What about, James, what about James Newton Howard? Oh, that's I don't true. know who that is. Um, oh, I James uh, Newton Howard! You, you've you heard us James Newton Howard score. Uh, he did the score from Maleficent. Harry. That's what about Harry Gregson Williams? <laughs> I, what about, I like Elliot, Elliot, um, Hall? How about how about Han, how about Hans Zimmerman? I I think I know who that is. Zimmer. I know who that is. What did I say? Z Zimmerman. I was Zimmer. just saying how how sick I am of Hans Zimmer. It's Hans Zimmer. Hans Zimmer. I was close. I was yeah, just saying. Yeah, I, want, I want these two guys to replace Hans. Anyways, Zimmer. Anyways, Hans anyways, Hans anyways, Hans anyways, I was just making face. a point. Yeah. I'm making a point that Danny Elman did a tremendous job with Terminator Salvation. He did. He kind of improved the film that See, way. See, Danny Elfman is so much better than we give him credit for. He's not just Tim Burton's guy. I mean, yeah, he no. does the Tim no, Burton he... stuff for the Tim Burton movies, but when he's not doing right. that, I mean, for fuck's sake, he he's done the soundtrack for The Simpsons. Let's give him some more credit yeah. here. Exactly. So, I mean, that's one thing I could just chalk it up for the Salvation. And that's why I, I I can actually listen to the Salvation soundtrack and be like, oh, Danny Elfman, I love you so much. Yeah, but... Harry might be coming back for a sequel to Forbidden Zone. Really? Hmm. Huh. Well, Interesting. I think... But, um... It was Salvation for me. For me, at least. I thought the concept was interesting. Sure, the acting is subpar. I mean, Worthington, worthless. It, it, it's... Marcus was a ridiculously stupid character that did not want not supposed to be in the film I mean the film starts off in 2003 and then all of a sudden boom we're in 2018 it's like why and Helen Bar Carter is in here too oh look at that there's a connection Tim Burton oh Danny Elman does the score Helen Bar Carter is in here oh. yes. right. I mean her that oh is... um actually the funny thing is um I remember watching the movie yeah I love yeah, I love the score. That's what I felt improved the action for me. It, it did. improved it. It, did. it made mm -hmm. it better for it me. And I improved it because the action, just the action was in it. It was pretty good, actually. I mean, of course, there was a part where you see a giant Terminator robot, a huge, gigantic, like mech robot, and it was like, whoa, Skynet oh, did yeah. that. I am going to make it. Yes, and. See, that's what I felt was missing from the third movie with me. I like when I can hear good music and see some good action scenes. Yes. And I felt that was missing. I felt so bored from it. And I was like, really? Like, Danny Elfman was definitely a far superior choice. And I'm so glad they picked him for that. Um, that's why I like the action scenes better in that movie, even though it looks like it's not yes. a good-looking movie at all. Or nor no. is it very good acted. And, uh, from it. I even... I even... I even suggested while watching the movie, like, you know, maybe if the film had the color like Mad Max Fury Road, yeah. like, it's all brightened up and it's all gorgeous looking, that would have been Mad maybe Max salvation. Mad Max a lot of, like, beliefs that Hollywood seems to have about what post-apocalyptic movies need to have. And like, George Miller just proves like, them Like, wow, wrong. Matt, look at Mad if, Max, it's a post-apocalyptic movie with color. If, if Terminator Salvation was directed by George Miller, it would have made it a little bit better because he has experience with post apocalyptic films and he would have done something different for the franchise. Yeah. That's just me talking about so, it, I it's not that too bad. It's not like the worst thing at, at the worst. most. The, there's worse movies in this franchise. Yeah. I, and we're about to get which, to that. I was gonna say, yeah. 
<clears throat> um, yeah, I like Terminator Salvation better just because it gave me something to care about. <laughs> Compared to the third film, it did nothing for me. And then the fourth one at least gave me the concept and and interesting story, interesting ideas that I felt were better. That's just okay. Now, now for shall I uh, shall I uh, do an introduction about what I'm gonna play? Or should I just play it? Play it. Play it. Just get it out. Hey, Mike. This is Morgan, but I say happy 4th of July. Yeah, I just came out to see Terminator Genesis. Um, yeah, very interesting crowd. There's like maybe 10 old people in there, uh, one small kid, and yeah, that's strange about it. I just wanted to say it was the first one to see this podcast. I'd like to thank you for putting this past scene in this movie for a future podcast topic. Yeah, I'd like to say on the behalf of the suck, the boy. It's on Highway Terrier Salvation. I think you eight dollars and fifty cents. Thank you so much for having me through here, such a blockbuster, underwhelming cat. I love you. I love you. I hope it gets you in your sleep. Take care. Bye. That was um fairly awesome. I. So the phone yes. guy from Five Nights at Freddy's was disappointed with it. Yes. Well, unfortunately, you didn't hear the aftermath. Okay, so what exactly was that? That was Morgan, Morgan calling so... out. <laughs> oh, I need that. Oh, I needed that. So, okay. Morgan, why do you have okay. better audio than Mike does? Yeah. Mike's supposed to be the leader. I just Ooh. shut up. Yep. So shut up. Shut yeah, up. what That's you Mike's heard fault. there, what you heard there on the phone was Morgan calling. He, Mike. All right. Up. Yeah. So he he so he went to see Gen- Genesis on Fourth of July night, and uh, I was I, I was busy doing some stuff on the farm I live Celebrating on. Celebrating your country, unloading. I hope. Yeah. I was by unloading some hay into the barn, of course, <laughs> but of uh, I was the. <laughs> of course. Yeah. So I was. I wasn't. My phone was in the house. I wasn't. It wasn't outside, so I didn't hear th- him calling. And then once I got in the house, I had a voicemail from Morgan. What the heck is this? And I listened to it. And I was like, what? The... And I, I, I texted him like, you did not. You did not just do that. Oh. <laughs> if I. If I would have picked up, he told me that it would have been like a co-review on his Cinevlog, and you can actually see him on the Cinevlog at the beginning actually calling me and trying to contact me and doing that voicemail, which is glorious. May that haunt, haunt, may that laughter haunt your nightmares. <laughs> that, I often hear that at night. I do. I often hear that at night. I'm thinking, my oh my god, I'm sorry, Morgan. Thank you, James. So, I'm talking to you. I'm, 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 I'm sorry, Morgan. I'm so sorry, Morgan. So I'm gonna so... dream about, about that CGI abomination with Mike's evil laugh. Again, blame blame PewDiePie. Oh God, PewDiePie uh, existing. But um, can't I just have that what's... dream of pushing Matt into a volcano, please? That was actually a better night. <laughs> oh, that's that for Matt. Matt. That was, I, man, I'd rather push Matt into a volcano than experience that again. All right, so recently, as we're doing this episode four, Paramount decided to do another reboot slash sequel to the Terminator franchise sequel called slash, Terminator slash Genesis. Slash who the fuck could keep track anymore? Exactly. Well, they apparently don't because they had problems five minutes into this movie. How that? So yes, besides Morgan James, recently saw the film, and uh, these two are going to enlighten us on how this film fails. You're a mean one, Mr. Bootleg. You did... You really were there. <laughs> I didn't want to say it, because it could get in trouble for that. Oh, you evil. It you doesn't sweet. deserve a dime. Um... Morgan, Ooh, you first? I th- explain. Explain you two, and then we'll wrap it up. I don't even want to talk about this movie. Okay, like, I will. Uh, but I, the the 
it, it's it's a weird parallel. Like 1993, we got Last Action Hero. They said it was gonna be the next big thing, the big ticket of 1993, and then Jurassic Park comes in. Now there's a difference. Um, Jurassic World comes in a month ago, and then Terminator. I'm just gonna call it Terminator 5. I don't care. There's really no point in calling it by its actual name because I'll probably mispronounce it. So yeah, Terminator 5 coming in, and pretty much it's a few weeks after Jurassic World. Hey, maybe we'll top it. Oh no, it doesn't. Irony. It Look, we're, it doesn't really matter because we know the top movie is going to be Star Wars anyway, so who cares? Yeah. <laughs> this is all just this... build up. The problem with this movie is that it doesn't know what it wants to be. Like, the very first third or so is like Back to the Future Part 2. It goes back and revisits like classic moments from the first film and then somehow reimagines bits from the second movie with the. They even do the thing with the T 1000 running after them in, uh -huh. like, in, in 1984. Like, like, if, if you uh -huh. really want the full, if, if you really want my full pain, go see the Cinevlog, but it, it's been a few weeks now since I've seen this movie, and after reading articles, doing research, I can pretty much say that this is probably in the top five of the worst of 2015, and here's why. After I saw this movie, I didn't really know what to make of it. I just, you know, scratched it off as a bad entry. And then I read some behind the scenes production stuff, some of the things they plan to do with the movie, and they're pretty much trying to set this up as a franchise. And there were a couple of things that they pretty much said off the side, which weren't explained in Terminator 5. Again, I'm calling it Terminator 5 because I don't even want to mispronounce it and have people yelling at me for it. It doesn't even deserve the mention of its title. So, okay, big spoiler alert. This movie is not about alternate timelines. It's about alternate dimensions, which it doesn't even go into detail to until one little scene like near the mid credit sequence. And it bugged me so much that it's like, well, you could have explained that in some way and made this a standalone film, and that's the problem. It's trying to set itself up as a new trilogy, a new franchise, which they said they were going to, which, okay, fine, but at least leave the first movie open-ended. Like, if you're gonna go and set up this whole new series, make sure at least the first one is so tightly wrapped that if it doesn't do well at the box office, you have a standalone entry, and that's the problem. It keeps introducing all these things with, like, many different plot holes and stuff. There's a good term here that goes back to save Sarah Connor, and they don't mention, well, as, as a nine-year-old, I should add, to avoid confusion, they, they send one back to save in her when she's a nine-year-old. They don't mention who sent them. They don't even say who sent them. Yeah, that's a big mystery yeah, here that's... about who sent that Terminator. And it's so obvious they're doing up like, sequel fodder so they can answer that one. Um, and then they have this whole thing which is really weird with Sarah Connor making a giant time machine and they use it to jump forward in a time so they could have old Arnold come in with old grandma hairdo and try and be an action hero <laughs> this yeah and, and there's a lot of concepts they have in there which could work but they're so wasted they have Skynet doing this whole Facebook app that's gonna launch and take down the network and everything yeah it's like from the previous movies in fact it's more so two and three reinvented they have Matt Smith in a wasted cameo so if all of you Doctor Who fans out there avoid this one because Doctor well, Matt not... Smith is wasted it's like oh no we're gonna use him for the sequel it's not even a cameo it's not a cameo they're setting it up they're setting the character up for the future sequels. It's a small part, and they're trying to set them up for the future sequels. That's what I've been You're reading. You're living in a Hollywood age where franchising matters way more than making an actual movie from the beginning of the movie itself. Like, or friggin' Pirates of the Caribbean is doing it. Friggin'. Like, you, like, nowadays, you just cannot make a standalone film. It just cannot ha happen. It worked for Jurassic World in a sense. At least they opened it up to at least allow the possibilities of sequels without having some open holes. 
Okay, there is one thing that is obvious that they said, oh yeah, we're gonna have that in there just to make a sequel or somehow continue on that, but at least you can look at it and say, okay, this is a standalone movie despite the fact there's connections with the first film. Terminator 5 is trying to set itself up for a new universe, but it's doing it wrong. Wow. And it's... good, 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 good. God, the way they set it up for, like, the, the upcoming sequels. Spoiler alert. Because they can't have Arnold... They can't have Terminator franchise without Arnold, so we're gonna update him. We'll just dump him into a vat of goo, and now he's part T-800, part T-1000. Yeah, he's a liquid Terminator, part mechanical Terminator. Okay, so let me get this straight. We can just go ahead and spoil the entire ending for Terminator Genesis, but I'm not allowed to bring up the death of Kyle Reese. Is that is that how this works, James? Yes. <laughs> because we'd <laughs> rather keep because we want we don't want to spoil people of good movies. Mm-hmm. The oh. hey, 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 hear me out. The four of you did not see this movie, okay? You're getting the benefit of a doubt here. Besides, Mike, you just bleep this whole thing over anyway. I'm still going to see it on Thursday, so shut up. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. Don't put yourself through that. I'll see anything that takes attention away from Jurassic World. Go, go see it. Oh. Minions! Oh, I have to go see Minions. Just I'll, I'll see yeah. Inside Out, maybe. Or like Inside Out, please. Go yeah. see that. Go see wait, wait, Inside wait, Out. Wait, yeah, yeah, Inside Out. We got Ant-Man coming up. We got the new Mission Impossible movie coming up, and that actually looks better than Terminator 5. I saw a trailer for that when I was seeing Terminator 5, and I said, wow, why didn't that movie come out sooner for the 4th of July? We got when a does... second we, we got a second Rogue MI5 coming up, and that movie's not coming does... until, like, July 31st. When does Fantastic Four come out? August. It's August. August. We've got that. We've got that going. Yeah. If I may uh, give one more one thing, well, not give, but I like say one thing about Terminator Genesis, is what? that uh, um, the thing is, is that in terms of box office, it could not have come in at a worse time because holy crap, like so far, like yeah, it could be making some money, but really not as much because when it came in, um, it went in, it arrived during the biggest box office battle of the year of Jurassic World versus Inside Out. And now, like, it's, now everybody's put to the side, and, like, now it's in fourth place because the arrival of... Banana! Yeah. So, of course, like, out. Minions right now is dominating box office, so, like, it could be, like... It could, like, I'm not... I don't think it's going to be a hit. Like, at the most, it's going to be, like, profitable, but... Yeah, I think not even profitable. Can I can, can I mention a little ironic thing here? Terminator Salvation grossed in 12 days 92 million. Terminator 5 has so far grossed in its 12 day total 68 million. Mhm. I'm looking at it. And see and here's the thing about that. I would rather see the Future War trilogy that they were going to do with Terminator Salvation. That would have been something so more interesting than this gen Genesis Genesis crap that they do it now. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I agree. More like Terminator. Like it's more it's more in with the franchise tone than freaking sure. generic but, salvation. But this it's movie, th th this movie jumps around so much. I would have been fine with the whole recreation thing, even if the recreations were like stale and stuff. Like they actually have that opening thing. They actually do like the opening from the nineteenth nineteen eighty four Terminator with new digital young Arnold, you know, walking in Los Angeles and meeting the punks and everything, even though his ass is painted digitally black because they can't have a bubble butt for PG thirteen film apparently. And th th this film just constantly jumps around. It feels like it meanders without a plot. First it recreates the first it, movie. Then they go forward in time to try and stop Skynet from launching a Facebook app. Then actually, another character comes in and he's all like, oh, hey, I am from the future. Oh, no, wait, I am actually something else. I am not actually what you think I am. And then they, like, oh, now we gotta stop this person and stop Skynet and then we have to deal with the Terminator who's, like, obsolete and everything and he's slowly gonna decay or something like that. And it, it, 
and then they have to, to, to and then J.K. Simmons comes in and he's all like, Hi, I have a character, you saved me because you're altering the timeline, I'm gonna help you out. Oh no, I'm a wasteful character, I'm not gonna use for the climax when I commit some great help. That is the whole movie in a nutshell. It is throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. It is not making a coherent, it's not making a coherent narrative. At least with Back to the Future Part 2, they had the almanac from the future. And that was the driving narrative force because that almanac was changing things. This movie, also, on the other hand, starts off with something, and then it just goes into, like, many different directions without any connection whatsoever. James, oh, oh, take the stand. This is my mic drop. Fuck you all. Oh, okay. There's also okay, okay, my my problem, okay he, he's not going anywhere. He's going to be back. But my problem with this film here is, like I said, five minutes in. Five minutes in. It didn't even take, it didn't even take that long for for me to say yeah this takes the cake because we all without without the perception that this is an alternative universe nothing makes sense to com connect it to previous films i mean we start out again uh, uh when, when was judgment day uh when did it uh, eventually happen it was supposed to happen in 1997 right What's well, been postponed to 2017? To 20 whatever. Well, guess what? In this movie, it, it did happen in 1997. It did happen in 1997. How is that possible, considering? Well, no, I, I just read it. They postponed it to 2017. That's why they go into the future. And then, that yeah. Well, I just watched the movie, so. Maybe so, this operates by the like time travel theory of different universes so maybe this is the universe where that stuff doesn't get tampered with can, can i finish hey. my can i finish my my rant against this please without i'm, so, I'm sorry i'm sorry jada I, i'm sorry I, I don't want to sound like i'm bullying on on you or anything like that but we we have a point in the first five minutes where young kyle reese about 10 years 10 maybe 12 years old is rescued by John Connor, and I'm saying to myself, okay, I know you guys didn't like Terminator Salvation so much, uh, not you guys in particular, but audiences in general, but that doesn't, but if, in that movie, he was, he was a teenager when he was rescued by John Connor, and it happened completely differently. You cannot, it happened, you cannot discard that it happened. And so probably ignore salvation for a it, reason. No, you don't. You, you can't do that. Because it takes place that. during I mean, one. And, it takes place between one and two. They're not getting ignore the previous sequels. Just like how the Sarah Connor Chronicles ignores the third fucking film. It's just they ignore certain films to do their own. By shit. the way, Th fun this fact. is Highlander levels of stupidity here when it comes to the continuity. Okay, let me put it that way. I really don't. I they don't care. care. They don't care. And and when they when they finally kick into the plot, it it's it especially does not make sense because now you have to erase everything that happened in the first film by by retconning it by sending back another Terminator to the chat to the childhood. How many how many robots do we need to send back into the past to alter the alter the the timeline? I really think that with the time travel plot, you could make the argument of alternate timeline to address the continuity thing. Like, this they, is the timeline where the date didn't get postponed and the judgment date didn't get stopped the first time. Doc Brown needs to come and explain that here because, seriously, they, they don't bother. They just I, guess you, I guess that they should be an expect, established. Mm -hmm. Yes, it, sh it should be. Thank you. It should be established. It, Not that it made much sense in Back to the Future Part 2 to begin with, but okay. Here. Oh wow. Back to the Future was a comedy. Like it was tongue in cheek. I, the, the absurdity of it could be taken in a farcical it. sense. This is that's supposed to be serious business. That's why I accept it. That's why I accept it. I, I give it a I, I give that a pass. I mean those are beautiful movies. I'm not complaining about it. It's do you wanna take this shit seriously? Um they, they they don't know what point in time they're they're in, and yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it. They don't 
because they don't uh, they don't hide this in the trailers. The twist halfway through the film is that guess what? John Connor is now a Terminator. Um, Which they spoiled yeah. in the trailers. Exactly. Yeah, they spoiled in the trailer, but, but yeah, they but don't here explain they, why but or here what. they play it off like it's a it's a spoiler. They say after he sent Kyle Reese back into the past, he 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 lost another battle. Wait, I thought that was the end of the war. No. And and what and and where is all the sending of the other robots into the into the past? You know where where does all this where was all this established in this movie? No, it it completely glosses up over it all. Uh, to say that now, yes, John Connor is a is a uh, a part liquid Terminator. He's he's assimilated, not like uh, not. He, he's assimilated nanobots. like he's a, the, like he's they the, stole the nanobots from Big Hero Six. The, he's like the board from Star Trek. Oh, that's that's how they do this. Uh, so so now they're so now they're ripping that shit off, and I'm they yeah Kyle, Kyle Reese and and Sarah Connor going from the future to the past, from the past back to the future, where it's now an alternate timeline where Judgment Day didn't happen again, and that's where your, that's where your, your sources is, is probably getting it, Mike. That's what oh, they're supposed also, to gotcha. also, don't, don't, don't forget the fact because they didn't screw in 1984, there's no John Connor in this timeline. Yes. Technically. Well, they... They rewrote the timeline, so they haven't screwed yet. But yeah, yet is yet. the key word. They had, they try to have a budding relationship at the end, mm -hmm. and it's a super happy fun ending. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Ranting, ranting edition. Um, is it bad to say that? None of the webcams on my end of Morgan, James, and Jada is not even showing no, up on my end. No, we surpassed. No, like, uh, there was a Skype there was a said that we said, surpassed. Um, we surpassed four yeah, hours, I know, and this, I wanted to say, uh, which, which is bad for the viewers out there who are watching right now, because it's all swirly, whirly world oh, I here. I thought it was just me, and I thought you were getting them. No, I'm having a no, I I didn't want to say anything because they're so in depth in the conversation. It's still not showing up. God damn it! I can it. actually oh. see your, all all the video fine, but I guess it's not recording. I guess my end is like oh they didn't say fuck you. Yeah, because I had the same uh, problem after the four. It was only, it was actually yeah only Morgan, Jada, and James. Everybody else came yeah, back. Yeah, so. Yeah, so I didn't want to mention it during the the ranting. Which whoa, James, whoa! I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've never I seen you. Not... I have never, I have never seen you rant before. Oh my god! Hi, Jada. I'm sorry if I if if I if if you feel like I, I shoot her ass shoot out. You out there because I didn't I did not. I was just trying to so... offer a solution to something that was clearly vexing you, man. Mm -hmm. I was just trying to yeah. give your mind some peace. I, by I know. like giving you like a theory, like maybe it's an alternate timeline. Well, it could be. Maybe so... they established it in the deleted scene, and they decided that you know Matt Smith was so much more important. Well, well we just have to see when it comes me, out on home media. Let me put like this: Be glad you didn't have us talking about Chappie. Oh yeah, yeah. That's, that's all that's those guys are telling me that. That is oh, number. So that, is, that is that is already number one on my list of worst of films. Seriously? So here's yeah. they hated it that much. He they hated Chappie so uh -oh. much. Oh, uh, you go sleepy weepy don't, now. Don't we do. You go sleepy weepy. We do. We, <laughs> we we don't want to go into that now, but uh, well, I wanted I, to talk I think about. I get to steal more money to get more buddies. Let me talk about the the future of the franchise here. Um, they don't give so... a shit how how much money this movie makes. They greenlit two sequels. So here's the thing, um, Skydance Productions uh, are doing these this trilogy, and 
uh, a new standalone trilogy. Matt Smith's character T5000 is set to appear in all three films as a connecting source for all three films. Um, but they, a Paramount Pictures announced they have release dates for May 19, 2017, June 29, 2018. So they're sequels to Genesis, Genesis. And here's the thing. They're doing this because, as per um, a copyright reversion, Cameron gets the rights back in 2019. So they're, they're pulling this shit out and pushing it out before James Cameron gets the God, rights. This is like this is at, fucking Amazing Spider-Man all over again. Thank you. It's like Fantastic. All it's like Fantastic Four again. actually. This new fantas- this Fantastic Four film coming out is actually because of that too, because they Fox or what 20th Century Fox or whatever the company had the rights to the Fantastic Four. Well, They're like, shoot, we have to produce this movie so that they, we don't lose the rights because we want the rights to this. Property, Fox Marvel might get it back. At I don't. Superhero movies than Sony is, and clearly right, better but... than they are at making Terminators. So Damn yeah, man. I just wanted to mention that. So so yeah, so in 2019, he's got to get it back, and he'll be the benefic- benefactor of to ch- of the changes to the series. But besides besides the two upcoming movies, we get another TV series. Oh boy. Uh, so um. Which is weird, because the new Terminator series is also the same people who were together on the Sarah Connor Chronicles. The same people that Fox canceled the shit out of? Why would they want yeah, to go apparent- back to Fox? They, so they have, yeah, it's Ashley Miller and Zach Steins who are now writers and producers of the series. And the series will deviate, de- they deviate, mind you, deviate from the franchise history at, at the critical moment in 1984, the Terminator, and will integrate with the continuity of the series, the films, the reboots. And the title, working title now, is Terminator Project Skynet. Okay, well, let's see. Oh, that's just lovely. Now they make like a whole amusement park out of it. So, so the next freaking coming years we're gonna see some crappy tv shows tv show and then crappy sequels the tv show's gonna be crappy i mean it's made by the sarah connor chronicles people true but it's coinciding with the film new rebooted film trilogy so i don't know how the heck they're gonna tie it all together i mean lord lord knows friggin um yeah it could be true, actually. The TV series might be way better than the movie in this case. It's happened before. But, uh, it, it has. And let's just hope in 2019 James Cameron does actually does a freaking Terminator movie to get back to it and just, like, retcon the whole thing and just, you know, and so he's not focused on freaking Avatar sequels for fuck's sake. Come on, James Cameron, do some other fucking films because I just want... Terminator to be back to its glory days. I just think of... Terminator should like be over by now. Like, aren't we done? I, I, aren't know, we at the point where we're spreading yes. the butter over too yeah. much bread? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just gonna say it. Yeah. That too, because like I said before, the first two movies are a closely niche story, and they should have ended right after two. But no, 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 no. Let's melt this like motherfucker the thing about out. Like time travel stories, is there a good novelty? But the longer you keep them going, the more convoluted and confusing they get. Yeah. I you know, even Back it. to the Future wasn't innocent from this. Freaking Doctor Who, my god. I mean, it's still enjoyable. People still like it, but Lord knows it's confusing yeah. as fuck. Oh, yeah, but it's, yeah. <laughs> but, but, Doctor Who's wow. just transcended oh, past gosh. being convoluted and confusing and just circled right back into who even cares. We, because it's gone on that long. I don't know if Terminator's ever gonna be successful enough to reach that point. Nah. Doctor no. Who, it took like 30 years. But at least, but at least right. with Doctor Who, they have different actors portraying the Doctors. That's the one big thing that everyone's right. turning to. That is, well, yeah. So that's the one way to continue Terminator on the series. Terminator has like different Sarah Connors and John Connors. <laughs> yes. But but have, yes. But does it have a different T-800? No. No, because... That's the thing. Might and it's Arnold's vehicle. Might I address also that... Might I address also that in this movie they they hired a, an Australian actor and a British actress 
as their as their leads, but they could not keep their American accents. What? Yes, yes, yes. I forgot to mention. Yes, so L Linda Hamilton is the only American actress to play Sarah Connor. So in the TV series, uh, Sarah Connor Chronicles, Sarah Connor is played by Lena Lena Headley. Headley. Yes, uh, so she's Game of Thrones. Bobby. Yeah, she's pretty cool. She's a, she's a great actress, actually. She's in Game of Thrones and all that stuff. But then, of course, in this film, you have uh, Emily Clark, who is also Game of Thrones, <laughs> playing the part of Sarah Connor. So it's just like, I, I wonder if... Here's an interesting they, fun they... fact. And she plays the part of Sarah Connor like she's a bit of a diss. Here's, here's, here's oh, a little geez. fun fact she, about... She talks uh... like a... She, she doesn't talk like 1984... Uh... Uh... Linda Hamilton. She she talks like a twenty first century person. No, but this is well, that's this is really interesting. Okay, the, for, for those of you who don't know, when Sarah Connor Chronicles came out and they announced Lena Headey as being the casting decision that they made for Sarah Connor, mm -hmm. there was some controversy, not dissimilar to the controversy that stirred around Gal Gadot playing Wonder Woman, in that a lot of the complaints revolved around the fact that she was too skinny and not like beefy enough or, or presentable enough whereas Linda Hamilton was like this really beefed up character they were all complaining that you know Lena Headey was too small and non-imposing and bony to which I must ask where is your fucking god now damn criticizers huh with fucking Amelia Clark Lena Headey's looking pretty good now isn't she I'm I... Amelia Clark Lena Headey is an imposing looking woman. Maybe she's not mm -hmm, a bodybuilder like Linda Hamilton, but she's tall. She's 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 muscled enough. She's not skinny, tiny little Amelia Clark. Right. Like I can't help but right. laugh my ass off thinking about how much people complained about Lena Headey's casting. And now they've yeah. got like this little person who was playing a sixteen year old on television just a few months ago. <laughs> because that's how slim she is. And now she's Sarah yeah. Connor, and I have not actually heard a lot of complaining about this. No, it's like, weird. Like, most complaining well, I've heard uh, is that she's not a particularly good actress, which, you know, she's not, but that's not so the you, point. Well, you just heard the complaints from me, so... Yeah, um... And that's the thing with, uh... Sarah Connor Chronicles, briefly, that... Her portrayal of Sarah, is she's, she's cr trying to be Linda Hamilton. She tried to take the persona of that from Linda Hamilton. She tried to monologue like her, and she tried to talk like her in a weird sense, but kind of worked out for her. Because Lena Headey she's... pulls off the tough woman thing. She I mean, does. And... does not. Like, no, God, she, she doesn't, really based doesn't. on what I've seen in the trailers. So no, she doesn't. In... I don't, don't even know if she's trying to I know you guys don't harness Game of Linda Hamilton. She like, does this thing in Game of Thrones where she tries to be all imposing and she pulls off all these big speeches like, I am a queen and I am the boss of everyone and I will not be talked down to because I have the power to do all and I will destroy everyone. It's just like, shut the fuck up. You are so small and so bad at acting and you've done nothing, Daenerys. You have done nothing. Your minions have done all the shit for you. Shut up with your speech. <laughs> Sorry. Just went off on a bit there. That, that's okay. We all have those moments like I did earlier. Is that our timer? Yes. Five hours later. <laughs> that was what I was playing. What had it done? Morgan. 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 All right. Morgan. 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 Are we done next episode? I'm trying to end it, but Morgan's being a mechanic. My knuckle laughing douche. No offense. Okay, for that. Thanks for that.
Maniacal oh laugh. Oh my god. Maniacal laugh. You're welcome. <sighs> this has been Cinema Royale. This is a fucking long episode. I'm truly sorry. I'm truly sorry. I'm... This has been the Terminator franchise. What do you think about the Terminator franchise? What's your favorite Term Terminator film? I know you're going to say T2 Judgment Day down below. Yes, but why? Why? Explain why in the comments below. And uh, subscribe for more Cinema Royale. And hopefully, hopefully we never do these long episodes again. I tried to do that in the past, but apparently this episode took fucking longer than it should be. Oh my lord. Um, so, next episode we're going to pay tribute to James Horner, the... Uh, composer that uh, recently died and we're going to talk about his music and films and it's going to be a little interesting because we normally don't talk about music so we'll talk about film scores that he done and how they affect the movies that we're going to pick mm -hmm. I will say that my pick is going to continue as Arnold Schwarzenegger month because I'm going to pick Commando because he actually composed Commando which is interesting enough I'll take the lamb for time thank you Oh. <laughs> he's the, he's the anime. He's gotta do the cartoon. I don't know. I'll well, look well, him up after I Why couldn't you I have American Tail or something? Because the Land Before Time, I have to talk about it. The impact, though. You understand the impact of it. Yeah, and the yeah. additional music cues, which are not in the theatrical cut. Yeah. And Diana mm -hmm. Ross. Well, I guess I'm gonna. Yeah. I guess I'm gonna go for Braveheart. Uh. Oh, that's cool. Nobody picking um, Titanic? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. It's still two weeks away, so you guys can figure it out. But yeah, thanks. Oh, well, uh, Matt, if this you gives me an open opportunity to steal something wicked this way comes. Oh, okay, you take that. <sighs> you did. Oh, yeah. I, I, I forgot that <laughs> movie existed again. Uh. You can take that so, one. Yeah. I'll allow it. Thank you. Till next time, if you stay this long, you're a dedicated fan. And I just want to end this off by saying that uh, all of you should consider me a trooper that throughout this whole time I still had my minion goggle. goggle. So I'm going to end this off by saying BANANA! Menet elez mers fuck de somel. We live, we die, we live again. <laughs>